Hello, can you hear me? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, I'm trying to see whether this works. I need a, a laser pointer. Does this laser pointer work? Just the one. All right, thank you. Yes, uh, can we have that slide again? Yes, thank you for the introduction. I'm from the uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, one of the academics there. I, I'm the coordinator of the Automotive Engineering uh, Specialization, and I supervise the Formula Race Car Project in NUS. Now, uh, all these are already uh, engraved in my name. As you can see, my middle name is Car. <laughs> I do all sorts of cars and go-karts as well. My Chinese name tells you that I enjoy teaching. Jiao <laughs> Xing. Uh, you can expand it to Yue Jiao Yue Gao Xing. The more I teach, the happier I am. <laughs> so it's all been planned. Right. Uh, since I was a little child, I have enjoyed mechanical engineering. And so I spent all my life in mechanical engineering. Uh, for the remaining years on this planet, I suppose I will be in mechanical engineering. I've always loved uh, taking things apart, putting them together, and my parents uh, don't, didn't buy me toys. They bought me things that can move, uh, or I can make them move, and anything that I can make to make a, produce a sound. So I used to make my own violins, guitars, I, t I tune pianos as well. And uh, I take apart all these instruments. I used to play with nuts and bolts and metal sheets and so on and make them move. And so, next slide. Uh, yes. Does it work? I'm trying to beat the clock, you know. <laughs> Sorry, this is the commercial. <laughs> well, somebody's got to set the clock again. <laughs> These are the things that move, that fascinate me. That's our, oh, where is it? Uh, that's a bicycle, of course. And uh, anything, I mean, that's me in a Land Rover, that's me in USA with all these armored vehicles. They all fascinate me and our NUS race car. And so um, I end up teaching race car engineering, which is a branch of mechanical, actually. And uh, what you saw was uh, Formula One cars turning left, and it seems very simple when you watch it, it's just entertainment, but actually there's plenty of mathematics, just when a car turns left. <laughs> when I teach them, I draw all these to show them what actually is happening on the various uh, components, and uh, there are 1,500 parts. In, in every one of our race cars, we have built nine, uh, eight so far, we're building the ninth one now, and uh, they're terribly complicated. And this is how messy our workshop looks, but it is a passion of mine, and it has become a profession of mine as well, so I don't mind. Uh, we'll have to inspect every single part of the car to make sure that nobody gets killed. Then we have to get it tested, and so we had our local racer, Mr. Hafisco, to come and uh, test drive, and also to give some uh, tips to the boys. And uh, of course, we have to prepare to race, and we go USA for the, the fun part, that is racing. Now, uh, that was something that started out of the blue, and Born Loser <laughs> says, we strive to achieve new levels of excellence. And what does doing the unexpected accomplish? The boss adds it to your list of routine duties. So this is what happened to me. It's been added on my routine duties. And now everybody takes for granted that this is part of my job. 
Um, this is where I no longer know whether it is a passion or a profession because the two have sort of blended. I think you are blessed if you can find a profession that incorporates your passion as well. So when we go to the Formula One garage, well, it's an education for the boys and for myself. It is also my job, but it is also a passion, right? And a lot of my students have become uh, sort of Formula One scrutineers out of these uh, 30 or so. Uh, eight of them uh, were my ex-students and they uh, enjoy uh, checking all the Formula One cars, especially to be near their heroes. One of them was doing my Schumacher's car, one of them was doing Jensen Button's car, last year somebody was doing Hamilton's car, and so they got near to all these people that's part of their passion. And uh, two of these guys have gone to uh, Beijing to be in the mechanics team for the race of champions. And some of them race in their own cars as well. Of course, they also work in this area, so it is their job, it is also their passion. They managed to merge, just like I did. And these two guys were in our race car team, but they have graduated four years ago. And the new fleet of uh, fire engines in Singapore were designed and built by them. So when you see these new fire engines, that's done by my students. Now, I have other passions, many of them, I can't incorporate into my work, like music, for example. I entertain them at big functions. This is the University Awards function in 2003. The trouble is, uh, you will never find an employer who employs you in a job that incorporates all your passions. There's no such thing as being employed as a renaissance man. Okay? So if you have five passions, you won't find an employer who wants to employ you to do five things and spend 20% of your time doing each one. Okay? So if you hire someone as a soccer player for Singapore Lions, he will not be expected to be the cook to cook for everyone and the physiotherapist to massage everyone at the same time. So those are all, uh, you have to pursue it at your own time. So I find that music, one of my passions, is just uh, for entertainment. And sometimes it's for mass entertainment, <laughs> the UCC, okay? mass entertainment. And sometimes it's for small-scale relaxation in just a small group. So um, I'm sure you have heard of this saying, find a job that you enjoy and you won't need to work a single day of your life. So when I am working, like putting this car together with my students, I don't even know whether it is my job or is it for fun. I'm doing both at the same time. So I would say that my passion is my profession. And that's why I'm happy teaching. Thank you.